wanted to uh, thank everyone once again for being here because many years ago I did have the dream of making this happen, but nothing happens unless people come together. And I do know one of my favorite sayings is, if you think that your dreams get big when they come true, they get bigger when others dream with you. So I do know that that is what is happening here. And as we move forward, if you can close that one and then bring the other one, I want to take some time because last year we celebrated our second anniversary of the LGBT Center. As an agency, we have been in business for 11 years but we're celebrating the opening of the community center of the Trans Life Center, the actual space, which is important to acknowledge. Because considering that we are a transgender organization, um, one of the biggest achievements for our city is that trans people are no longer visible, invisible. Anywhere you walk in these days, if, um, if you ask someone, where are the trans people, guess what comes to mind? That means that we have four buildings where there is an identity in our city, there is an address. We're no longer confined to the underground world that I talked about. We have a home. We have an actual place where we can be seen when you walk through those doors, they are transgender people. They are people who come together. They are LGBT people who come together to do something in their own community. So doing something in your community is how some individuals have paved the way for us to be here celebrating a third year. And last year, it was a little tough, but we still celebrate it in the same space right here. And I want to take time to acknowledge the people that we honor last year. And because we didn't have any money in the account at the time, we have money for the services that we were providing, but we really couldn't afford um, the actual awards. So I want to begin with that because it is very important to acknowledge those who are paving the way for this work. So, I want to ask the staff of the Life Center to come to the front so we can... <laughs> Patty, Patty's on her way. She sent the refry beans, but <laughs> she should have come herself. She was like, I want to make sure the fry beans get there to feed people. So. And as I announce, um, I want everyone to come here from the staff and grab one and present it to the individual. So, last year I started an award that is very personal because it has my name. And it is the Ruby Corrado Perseverance Award. That means that one person, that one individual who comes into Casa Ruby and does not give up, regardless of how tough it may be out there. And that is the one person who really, no matter what, homeless, whatever, money, no money, husband, no husband, is there making sure that they fulfill their dreams and don't give up. So, you're going to be surprised because you can't give yourself this award. This is someone that I met two years ago in a much different situation. And she inspires me even today because she still keeps trying. And this is someone that you don't have to know her story, but what you can know is that she keeps going and going and still has a beautiful place in her heart to welcome people who come to Casa Ruby. So, Lakeisha Washington, come and get your work, girl. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. 
The next award goes to someone that is also very dear to me because, um, actually, can you come and give this one? Yeah, she will. This award is to someone who came to Casa Ruby uh, a little bit over two years and saw an opportunity. And saw an opportunity to also, you know, do something in her community, in her own community. And she has a very beautiful story as a native Washingtonian who, you know, who's been in this city for 52 years. I have to remind her. <laughs> but she's my sister who, for a long time, well, I went out there and advocated for our needs, she kept it at home. Make sure that our computers were there, that the TV was there, that everything was there. But more importantly, she made sure that the doors were open. Whether it rained, whether it was a holiday, with the whole city government was closed, the federal government, she made sure that she was there. Because for us, there was no holiday. Some of our clients don't have a place to live, so where do they go? They come to us, and she always greeted them with a smile and a lot of love. So Caprice Williams, come here. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So give her her award. Go, go over there. So the next award is we, every year, we decided that we are going to recognize an organization that actually supports our work. And last year, we recognized the, the Georgetown Law Community Justice Project that supported us with a very important task that nonprofits have to do, and that was our strategic plan. It was a beautiful document that capture exactly what it is that we do, and more importantly, what we needed to do for the years to come. So they're not here, because the leader of, uh, she's moved on, but I wanted to make that recognition to the Georgetown Law Community Justice Project, who actually believed in us, and we will probably make a special presentation. The next award goes to someone that has also been at Casa Ruby before the doors even open. This is uh, someone who also has a passion to do things in her community. Someone that believes of the work that needed to be done, and she also made a commitment to be part of this work. Um, she grew up also in this city, and she understands what it is like to be, you know, in our shoes because she's also transgender. Uh, she is our first, one of our first board members who said, I'm gonna make this commitment because I'm doing it for people like me. And for, uh, as of today, it's been three years, and she still walks into Casa Ruby bringing groceries. Now that we have an adult house, she cooks for the clients because the adult house does not have funding for food. So every other week, she goes to the store, giant, and she gets things done. So for your commitment, I want to give you an actual award to Consuela Lopez. Yes. Give it to her, bro. Thank you. It was such a surprise. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, and last but not least, he is not here. And we last year implemented the Ally of the Year Award. An ally is the person who stands behind someone that has no access 
to a voice or power and builds access for people or organizations that normally will not have the opportunity to be listened to. So this individual is Dr. Ted Eaton, who we met about two years ago, who has been advocating for the transgender community and for the clients of Casa Ruby. And he's not here because he's in assignment from work, so I just want to give an applause to Dr. Ted Eaton. I want to talk about the work. 22 beds, it's a big deal. I had a meeting, lunch with the mayor, and she said, how many do you need? Well, right now, give me 50, and they will be full very quickly. But it is the beginning. It is the beginning to address something that, you know, most people had not addressed before. In our city, there's been a lot of work being, you know, that was done to address um, gay marriage, gay liberation, um, marriage equality, and we accomplished those things. We, we have done a lot of great things, but I also felt that it was important many years ago that the same way we talked about those particular rights that were needed, and that are needed to give people equality, that we also needed to talk about those that are not as lucky as those who are. So basically, um, that is where the um, advocacy began to tell their stories. Because six years ago, after having experienced homelessness several times, I ended up homeless. And many people didn't know it, because you know I have been doing work before. And, uh, but when I made it, I um, left the hospital on December 18, 2011, and I felt that I was gonna take my work to the next level. So that meant also addressing poverty and homelessness in the LGBT community. So that is where a lot of the work also comes in addressing because it was a story that needed to be told. Oh, okay, so we're gonna make some acknowledgements because that is also important to acknowledge those that are in the room who have um, been with us for a few years do during their work. So we have our council member, Anita Bonds, who is here with us today. Yes, hi, Anita. Yes. We have the director of the Office of Latino Affairs, uh, the first office that actually gave us money to do this work. Our first grant came from the Office of Latino Affairs. So Jackie Reyes. Jackie has been supporting our work, my work for years. A um, few years ago, she felt that it was important that for visibility, that the Latino community needed to know that we exist. And she said, Ruby, there's the biggest party for Latinos, it's called Fiesta DC. And she said, I want you to come and I want you to be proud of your community and show what everyone is doing there. And it wasn't totally expected, but I think we did expect that there was some, <laughs> some confusion. <laughs> and some people complained. And Jackie said, too bad, because they are marching. And not only she said too bad, she put us to the front. She said, yes. And like always, you know, people complain and eventually things get better. And at the end of the day, people celebrated and they loved our performance. But Jackie has been a very great supporter of ours. We also have in the audience uh, someone that I really you don't care. I'm not supposed to say that she was a, a honorary board member because she couldn't be a board member at Casa Ruby, but she's basically known everything that we have done from the beginning. And that is uh, Sheila Reed, who is now our <laughs> yes, uh, Gay and Lesbian Affairs Director. We have someone who is also um, 
was appointed to the new administration uh, with the Office of Human Rights. And when she first got appointed to the position, one of the first things that she did with uh, Elliot was coming to Casa Ruby before I even call and I said, can we meet, right? So, um, Monica, thank you so much for making our issues a priority. She didn't have money to do, you know, like many agencies complain, we don't have money. But she put together a bathroom campaign to address discrimination, people going to the bathrooms in our city. And since she took that campaign, there's been hundreds and hundreds of complaints. And this city's bathrooms are safer because of her and Elliot. Thank you so much. And there's lots of people here. There's someone in the audience who um, I love so much um, also. Jim, come on. Jim is one of those people that has done so much for Casa Ruby, including a donation that I can't tell you where it comes from. When the adult house didn't have any furniture or beds, he made sure he went out and uh, secured beds. We even got um, really beautiful furniture. And every month he sent someone over uh, he's always very involved with our work, so I want to say thank you. He works with the executive office of the mayor, and thanks to him, we're getting the mayor today because I forgot. <laughs> he facilitated things. You know, we, we have that. Once again, what I want to talk about is the formula. And I want to acknowledge two individuals that are not in the room. And that was the, how the day began today. So you can have an idea. I got a call from an 18-year-old lesbian who was dumped in Stanton, Virginia by the police officers in a shelter. 18 years old, right? She had been put in a position that she never dreamed of. She had become a victim of human trafficking. She was offered a job to you know, make money. And when she went to this person's house, she realized that this was actually a brothel where they um, have people engaging in sex for pay. And she definitely was not counting on that, so she escaped. She and other um, girls escaped. I don't know the full story because that was not what I wanted to focus on. But she escaped, and when she found a police officer, they took her to a shelter. And that is when the work began. So I've been on the phone. She's now on her way to DC, and we're going to put her in our LGBT youth house. So. She can have, you know, a place where she can build her dreams, right? I also want to acknowledge this afternoon before I actually walked out of Casa Ruby, someone who came in with um, physical, you know, reminders of what abuse is. And um, she had bruises on her face and her eye was still bloody. Um, but she was there. And with our board member, uh, Billy Tyler, uh, who was supporting her because our board members actually do stuff. They actually come to help clients, right? They also help us with so many other things. But Billy was uh, supporting this transgender woman who had gotten beaten in uh, PG County, and she was referred to us. And you know, I, I invited her to come because I told her this is a celebration. And I know that your body, physically you are wounded, but you have to start building inside that recovery. She didn't feel up to coming here. But I want to leave that because those are just two of the stories. 
And those are two of the stories that we are changing the outcome of how individuals, you know, go about their days in our city. And I speak for them because we are changing the formula. And the formula is that for years, there were people who will attempt to say that they were serving vulnerable populations, that they were even saying and writing on paper that they were supporting the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community on paper. But in reality, when they showed up for services, they wouldn't serve us. So we, and it began with me at Casa Ruby, we began changing that formula. There's a lot of people who feel that they have solutions for the problems that we face. The CDC has what is called uh, initiatives, you know, that are uh, based on evidence-based initiatives of how to do HIV prevention. But transgender and people of color were never at the table making those evidence-based initiatives to address HIV. There is a lot of work that is being done on behalf of our community, but we're not at the table. So we started changing the formula, which says that we are no longer going to be told how to address our issues. We are no longer going to accept that someone who doesn't understand how to serve us is going to have the access to take care of us. We are changing the formula that basically says that we cannot do work in our own communities. As you saw a little earlier, the staff of the Life Center, one of four funded programs at Casa Ruby, shows how that formula gets changed. It is us who have to do this work. It is us who can work with our own people and understand and care for them and educate them so they can have better lives and that they do not have to face and continue facing challenges in our society. So it is that formula that is basically saying to society, we are going to do work in our community. You're not willing to give us a job. Most places, even nonprofits, who receive a lot, millions of dollars, and I'm talking 15, 20 million dollars to work with marginalized populations, are not hiring us. People are not employing us so we don't have to be homeless, so we do not have to engage in survival work, whatever that is. And it is important that we come together and we are doing just that. We are actually taking those issues into our own hands, and we're doing it quite well. Three years into this work at the center, we are growing, we are thriving. We don't have nearly what it's needed to do the work, but it is the beginning. Today, we are the largest employer of transgender people in this city. We are today, we are the largest employer of transgender women of color, black and Latinas in our city. And possibly the country, right? So that is how you change that formula. That is why today we serve 
over 300 clients a month that are coming from marginalized populations. People that will not walk in into the traditional space that it's available to them and where the resources are sitting to help them, they are walking through our doors. And they are working through our doors because there is people like them when that door gets open. There is people like them when they walk through that door and they get hugs and they get support. And there's someone that can share the story of how they made it and now are building on their own futures. And that is what is happening in our city. In our city, we have an organization where LGBT immigrants who may not even speak the language that we all speak here are walking in to access services. And we are in a city where all of this happens because we have the support of people like you that even on a rainy day can actually come in and stand and support the work. We live in a city we have where we have a mayor who even before she became mayor of this city started supporting our work. Many of you don't know, but she was here. <laughs> Many of you don't know, but we are now um, enjoying the presence of our mayor, a great supporter of our community, and a great supporter of the issues that need to change, and someone that is helping to change the formula that I talked to you about. So I want to welcome someone who has really become a great supporter of the work that is happening. We were invited when she was elected, and many of us in the staff went to her um, uh, opening, you know, to her, the first celebration that she had, and everyone in the staff was inspired. Oh, yeah. Everyone was inspired because she is a Washingtonian, and is someone that is doing everything that she can. So those people, like our people at Casa Ruby, are not left behind. So I want to call on Mariel Bowser. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we made it. And she is here to celebrate with us. So I'm going to let her speak because she has a lot of things going on. Thank you, Ruby. Yeah, thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> and let me congratulate Casa Ruby on three great years. Give yourselves a round of applause. I don't quite remember when I first met Ruby, but I'm glad I did because it has been a trip ever since. Uh, because she tells it like it is. Um, she means what she says. Uh, she puts her muscle, sweat, love, and tears behind helping people. Uh, and I just am I'm so grateful that, that she is doing the work that she's doing. And I'm even more grateful that there's a cast uh, with her. So let's hear for Team Casa Ruby. I could tell you some stories about Ruby, but I won't because she has shared some really great things uh, with me. And one, uh, one uh, thing that she shared with me, and I, I do it from time to time, she says, you know, they call me Ruby, you could look at my lips, and uh, I put a little here and a little here, and I go, I'm ready to go. And that is a good tip, and I use it frequently. Uh, 
and I also want to acknowledge my team because I too can't uh, do this work without a, a tremendous cast. And I am very grateful to the people of the District of, for, of Columbia for giving me this opportunity uh, to lead. And uh, uh, the compliment that gives me the most joy is when people recognize the great team um, that we have assembled. And I have a few rules about people who work for me. You have to work hard all the time. You have to be honest and you have to share our values for how we continue to be a city that grows but grows for everyone. Uh, and that's what Casa Ruby uh, has been about, is making sure that nobody in our city is left behind, is forgotten, or doesn't have an equal path um, to a great life right here in Washington, DC. Um, so I have charged everybody uh, that works for me. Yes, we have a great office of LGBTQ affairs, and Sheila Reed and Terrence Laney are here. Stand up so everybody can hear you. We have a great office of human rights, and I know Monica Palacio has spoken to you. We thank her. And I think uh, Jim Slattery is here, who has worked for me for a long time, and he still likes me. That's a good thing. But everybody in a Bowser administration is charged uh, with making sure that we create pathways and especially focusing on our transgender brothers and sisters who face who face tremendous amounts of discrimination. Um, so no matter what the story of the day is, you're fighting this fight every single day. Um, and we have to make sure that we're fighting that discrimination as well. Uh, we just got our first budget passed through the Council of the District of Columbia. Uh, and I'm proud to say that that budget had a historic emphasis on housing. Uh, and our administration has a predominant emphasis on jobs. And so we want to turn some numbers around in our city. Um, we've invested $100 million with the promise that every single budget that I submit will create uh, $100 million more in the Housing Production Trust Fund, uh, which is so important to us. We're also looking for ways to expand access to the good paying jobs that are created uh, in in the District of Columbia in our government and in other agencies as well. Uh, but the promise I made uh, to Ruby wa was this, um, that we know the, the good work that's going on at Casa Ruby. And I know you're celebrating if you haven't already opened your house. Have you opened it? Yes. And so uh, we call that the soft opening, because the opening is when we, we bring the whole community uh, to celebrate uh, with everybody. Uh, and because she knows how to do it, she can be a model for, for other providers in our city. She can be a model for the nation. Uh, and that's why. I told her I'm going to soak up everything that she's doing because when I have the opportunity to go to the Conference of Mayors this month, I'm going to be looking to see what they're doing in other cities and be able to talk about Casa Ruby. When we have the opportunity to go to the White House for various events or to make the, the ask of the president, and the, and the way I see it, we have a, a few, few good asks to make of a president on his, um, in his final year. Uh, and if he can highlight the good work that we are doing um, in Washington with, with the government and with our partners, wouldn't that be a wonderful message to send across the country? Uh, so I wanted to come by and, and say thank you for the work that you're doing. I want to acknowledge uh, the awardees tonight and tell you to keep up the good work um, and to stay active and to stay in touch with us. Uh, we know that we are a welcoming city and a welcoming government, and there continue to be great opportunities to be on boards and commissions and to help us make this the city that we want to call home. So God bless you all, and have a wonderful evening. Before she steps off, I want to call the staff of Casa Ruby, and that involves pay staff and volunteers.
now is Jackie Reyes, who's here right in the front. Yes, of oh, okay, yes. Jackie is sitting right in front of me, and she's the director of our Office of Latino Affairs, and I want to thank you for being here, too. This is how you change the formula. I talked a little bit earlier about how we, those who were not given many opportunities, what those who people call marginalized, those who are really left behind, those who really are not given chances, are taking our livelihood serious. And this is what can happen when you invest in your people. And when I talked about the first support that the mayor gave us was before she even swor got sworn in. And when she got sworn in, she makes sure that our issues were also important. And she has our issues at stake. And this is how we really change our formula. This is how we become an example to the entire country and the world. We have uh, German television here, who is here today doing a story on Casa Ruby and the work happening here. And yes, Germany, our mayor is here supporting our work. <laughs> 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 and everybody who's going to see this in their living room on channel, uh, on 13. DC channel 13, 16. it is going to learn about our work and I hope you also celebrate with us and that you are kind to us when you encounter us on the streets, when we go and apply for jobs, make sure we get hired. This is what can be done. And we, are, it, we have a better future because there are supporters like the mayor in our city. And I know when she lives or she goes somewhere else eventually that our lives are going to be better because she made it part of her mission to support us. So thank you so thank much. Doing good work takes a lot of commitment. It takes people coming together and standing for something. So I want to take this opportunity to recognize those that are standing for something for the work that it's been done at Casa Ruby. I wish that we could thank so many more because it really, it's a lot of people that are making sure that our work continues, that the awareness continues to take place, that as the rest of the country is acknowledging lots of things that are wrong, that the people that are working supporting us are making sure that people know the good that we are doing. So can we please have the people there come and fill in the blanks in the chairs? I want to be respectful of this part of the program because I will tell you how important this is. There are people out there who don't care what happened to transgender people in this city. There are people out there who care less what happened to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender youth. There are people who don't care whether we live or we die. And the only way how that is going to change is for those who support the work to stand right next to us and show the world that it is okay to support our work. And it takes resources. It takes voices. It takes a lot to do this work. Just this week, Two of the people that came into Casa Ruby got jobs. Actually, three. Three. Kiara, who is in the story, got a job. And now has the opportunity to, you know, do for herself. Kiara! Two of our youth who had just moved in the house 
got a job. Now they can get up and then they can dream. They can dream and go to work just like the rest of the city. But it takes a lot of work to do this. It takes a lot. And it takes the support of people. I want to acknowledge something that, that is also part of the work. Last weekend, we were sharing with Shaquita Lee, who said, Ruby, I'm going to do my part. And I want these kids that are moving in the house to also have an opportunity to come and see my show, so bring them in. And she brought five youth from Casa Ruby to enjoy a really great show at the Howard Theater. And these young people were there to experience something that they normally don't experience, and it's called love. And the fact that she made them feel so welcome and so part of her work is, means a lot. So I want to recognize the individuals that actually have gone above and beyond and I am actually going to start with a very um, special award, and that is the Ruby Corrado Perseverance. You know what perseverance means? I'm not standing here in front of you leading a transgender organization as a transgender woman of color. I fill in a lot of the blanks, HIV positive, I've been a sex worker, homeless, I've been beaten, I've been raped, I've been shot. You name it, everything, right? Because that seems like that's the story for us. But I am standing here in front of you because I have been very persistent. Persistent. Even when people in my own community told me that I wasn't supposed to be there, I was still there. Even when people said, go away, we're not going to do anything for you, I still went back. Even when people really showed me that I was not worth it, or they told me to just disappear, I wouldn't. <laughs> and it takes perseverance. It takes consistency. A lot of people now listen to me because they've been listening to me for over 15 years saying the same thing. Be nice to us. Be kind to us. Give us jobs. Give us opportunities. So this award is given to someone that, like me, is not given up. It's not given up. This individual came to Casa Ruby even before Casa Ruby was, you know, open. I met her at a panel on LGBT youth homelessness. <coughs> and she had a different appearance, like many of us who don't have access to resources to transition into our new lives. But I knew that we had connected. So she came in months later, and she said, I want to be here. And she fit in. That's part of the formula. You have to fit in at Casa Ruby. It's not for everybody. And she fit in, and she's been there ever since. And I said, girl, I don't have money to hire you. She said, well, just give me money for the bus. But I want to be part of this change. And as remarkable as it was, she was only 20 years old. And transgender... African-American, and she said, I want to be part of this because I want to do something in my community. And she came in, and she moved up the ladder. Now she is our Transgender Life Center director and director of youth services, mentoring other youth. You know how powerful that is? A youth who's still having issues and difficulties in her own life, coming to help those that are just like her. So I really want to take this opportunity to thank this individual 
because you inspire me. It goes both ways. I inspire a lot of people, but I do get inspired. So I want to call here someone that I love so much, Mally Hatcher with the Ruby Corrado Perseverance Award. Work it. She is really what this agency really is all about. You know, she came with a different, one of the biggest changes this girl has made is that sometimes the people who come in to Casa Ruby work her nerves. <laughs> they really do. And I know if she was out there, she will do things different. And me and her have a code that when someone does something wrong and you really want to like be mean and say things, you just give them a lot of love. So sometimes I do something and she says to me, you know, Ruby, I really love you. <laughs> but sometimes I really screwed up, you know, like when I don't get forks for the center. She says, you know, Ruby, I really adore you. I love you. You're so wonderful. And I know I really messed up. <laughs> So I want to call uh, someone from the staff here. Well, someone who hasn't given an award. Where is um, Patty, Lisa, Lisa and Lisa? <laughs> yes, Patty and. Okay, and um, the next award is going to um, someone who, like the name of the person that is um, under, is doing more than just supporting the work with money. The Dan Massey Award, it's a very special award. The first, one of the first supporters of Casa Ruby was a couple, the Masseys. Uh, an older couple, you know, mature couple who believe in social justice and not just by saying it, you know, in support groups. They will come to Casa Ruby and they will make sure that the doors were open and they will make sure that they support it financially, because they did also. But more importantly, they supported us morally. You know, they gave us unconditional support, making sure that although it was very difficult during their first year, I remember one time I had paid the rent and I didn't, I forgot to pay the lights because I was, I was actually waiting for a check to come that had not come. And it was raining, and the building got floated, and it was dark, and, and Caprice came in, and she said, Ruby, everything is going to get ruined. And on top of that, she said, and, and the lights in the neighborhood are gone out. And I'm driving, I'm like, no, girl. <laughs> They're on everywhere else. <laughs> They're just not on here. And as that happens, you know, we started taking buckets and getting the water out. And I crumbled for the first time. I broke down to realize that we had hit a very difficult moment. And as I was like not even showing to the staff that I was, you know, breaking inside, I get a phone call. And it was Alison Gardner, and she says to me, is everything okay? And I just couldn't hold it. And I broke down and I said, the lights are out. And she said to me, okay, she said, hold on. And she got on the phone and she called the um, Pepco and she made a $1,500 payment so the lights will go back on. And she not only paid the bill, she called the city council and she said, the lights need to be on today. And they were on within two hours. 
I don't know what she did. It was that a kind of commitment that Dan Massey was diagnosed with cancer. And before Dan died, he told all of his friends that he didn't want flowers, that he wanted money to come to Casa Ruby. You know how difficult that was? I was in a conference in Chicago when I got the news. It was so hard to know that someone that stood behind you and next to you and will come to Casa Ruby to spend Thanksgiving dinner with the clients will take that even to their grave supporting this work. So this award really means a lot. And the person who is receiving it tonight is someone that I met a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and someone who I would have never imagined that was going to stand for what is right. Someone that I would have never imagined. And this person started contributing to the organization and it's a very um, known person who does activities. They, they, he leads several fundraising groups and makes sure that from the get-go that he started talking to people about our work so they will choose Casa Ruby as their charity. And this person has made sure we had access to money also to pay some of the things, but more importantly, began advocating for the issues. And I knew, before we even started talking about this award, that this person was going to be the recipient of this award, because it takes someone special. And I knew that when the mayor had been elected, and she had been in power a month, he called and he said, Ruby, what has the major done for you? Has she been to Casa Ruby yet? Has she made pledges? Is she doing what she says she's going to do? Because I heard her talking about homelessness, and she didn't talk about LGBT homelessness. And he has been standing for the issue, you know, and that is why this individual is going way beyond in making sure that we have resources, but it's also making sure that we have access. So I want to take this special moment, and Lisa is going to give Lane Hudson our Dan Massey <laughs> Award. Would you like to say a couple of words so everybody knows you? Thank you. Um, actually, I knew Allison and Dan. Um, they were always advocating for something and someone and other people. It's like their entire life was like based on it. Um, they used to live at 17th and Calorama, and they had events in their home all the time. Um, they would bring together all kinds of crazy people. Um, and I, I miss those events, and I miss Dan. Um, I got a message from Allison today. She's in Brooklyn. I uh, couldn't be here. Um, Ted Eaton, who um, Ruby, Ruby mentioned earlier, is a big reason I'm here today because um, Ted is such an advocate and pulled me in even more than I already was. We worked on the trans health care issue with Mayor Gray, who was a great ally as well. Um, anyone who is involved in anything should be talking about this. This is, if people think gay rights are the civil rights issue of our time, it, it really is transgender rights um, are the civil rights issue of our time. It, it's the... <clears throat> it, it's the least understood thing out there. And I'm really thankful for people like Ruby who never back down, never give up, and keep on going. This, this, perseverance or perseverance or however we say it um, is the key and we can never give up and, and that's what it's all about. So Ruby, thank you for all the work that you do. Um, I don't really deserve this, but you know, I'm going to keep working hard and making sure that I live up to the spirit of Dan Massey and that we get you everything that you need because you don't need two houses, you do need those 20 houses. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
see, this is how you change the formula, right? So the next award is going to someone who has supported our work for years, for years, for years, for years. Even before it was um, you know, popular to stand with transgender people and take pictures. You know, even when it was not popular, you know, to be next to sex workers, because there was that stigma, oh, you know, they're just prostitutes. No, we're not. We're human beings who were pushed to do things to survive when we cannot get a job. And this person has always, always make sure that when she had access, you know, to, you know, the community, she always welcomed us. And sometimes people don't have to say a lot. Sometimes people don't have to, you know, just be outspoken. But when they're in the room, they really make you feel like you belong in the room. And she's not only beautiful, you know, on the outside, because she's gorgeous, but she's also very beautiful on the inside because she really cares. And because she really cares, she was also very uh, influential when we were very much in need for funding to um, open our LGBT youth house. She, um, in people at HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, at the last Transgender Day of Remembrance, they presented us with a, um, a commitment of $10,000. In her words, like always, meant a lot more than what she said. So for supporting us through the years, through a lot of years, and making sure that we were in the room and felt like we belong in the room. I want to say thank you to June Crenshaw. So every time I'm in the room with Ruby, I'm so humbled and you know, we always talk about it takes a village. And this woman is always so amazing and so re-energizing um, that it inspires me to continue to do the, the small things that I do. Like Lane, I don't ap deserve this award, but I appreciate uh, the recognition of all of the leaders that are in this room that do the work. And it's, it's about changing laws but you really change the experience of individuals' lives. So thank you very much for all that you do and um, all that you do for, for the entire community. Thank you. And she does deserve it. She really does. Um, also, the next person who I am going to talk about, I met a few years ago. For, and I remember this person um, confiding me about personal things, uh, transitioning, actually. And me and this person connected so well. Because, you know, when you are transgender, you know, even though now people are talking about it, there's not a lot of people out there that you can actually come and say, hey, you guess what? I'm transitioning. And we had a connection. We had a connection. And another thing is, in DC, it's who you know and who knows you. This is the most political city in the world. And believe it or not, even trans people, we play the politics. I play them really well. Come on, money, come on. <laughs> the mayor is here. So. But it takes more than that. And I remember this person, you know, we had several conversations and he had taken on a new job. And the first, you know, commitment was, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna change how things are done in some particular settings, particularly in the organization that he's working. 
he said, I'm going to change things for trans people at HRC. Right? And he did. For the first time, you know, we have already been doing work, and we got a donation for our life center, $5,000. You know, some people say, oh, you know, they should have given you more. But they don't give us. So $5,000 means a lot. A lot. But the commitment behind that has been there for a long time. So this award is for the supporter of the year also, like June Crenshaw. And that is because it takes more than money to support this work. And we have been connecting ever since. We just had a couple of meetings not long ago where we really connected because the work is huge. And I am so thankful that you're supporting our work and that you're also supporting the movement in our country because it takes someone, you know, it takes a lot of work to be able to get up and stand for yourself, number one, but also stand for others in your community. So for standing for our community and Casa Ruby and the work, this award goes to Hayden Mora. Oh, yeah. All right. Very briefly. So I'm Hayden. Uh, Ruby is right. Ruby is one of the first people that I talked to uh, about being trans. She was one of the first trans people that I knew. Um, and that's how we began to get to know each other. You know, the thing that inspires me so much about the work of so many of the leaders in this room, Ruby, Caprice, Molly, but also Carlos and Felipe and Lords, is that the work that you all do is, is on the edges, the work that is so hard, right? You're going up against racism, against poverty, against misogyny, and people throw up their hands and walk away, and you guys do it every day, even though there are bullets and rape and violence and everything in the world that says to shut up and go away. And I'm so inspired by that, and I'm so inspired by the way in which you fight. But the other thing, and I, was, I thought about this, I never knew how to put it into words, but while I was watching that video, uh, you know, I come out of the labor movement, I spent 11 years in the labor movement, and there was this uh, strike in Lowell, a textile mill, and they had a saying about, not we want bread, uh, but we also want roses. Because bodies don't just starve, hearts do too. And I was thinking about that as I was watching the video. And in a world that is so hard, you don't just insist on structural change and policies and putting a roof over someone's head, but you insist on chandeliers and glitter and sunshine and joy and pink sheets. And I think that that is incredibly powerful and I'm so grateful to help you in any way that I can. So thank you so much. Part of the work that takes more than individuals is other organizations also supporting your work. Last year, we recognized the work of the Georgetown Law Community Justice Project. And that changed a lot of how our outcomes have played through this year. And this year, and actually last year, I met an amazing woman, an amazing leader, an amazing human being. This person, like me, had her own challenges in her own life. And like me, said no more. And she took on the challenge of becoming a community activist, a community organizer, a community worker. And in one of the meetings that we had, I already had heard about her work in New York City. And we connected. The universe put us together at a meeting that she came to the White House that I had not been invited, because that happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, where is Ruby? She needs to be in this room. Because she got to make it to this event. And she, and she knew that, you know, our work was important. And when we came together, she demanded that Casa Ruby was at the table. Because she had access that we didn't have. And in the conversation, I said, when are you moving to Washington? Because your voice is needed. You know, we need to 
change that formula. We're changing it here locally in Washington, but the formula goes beyond the District of Columbia. And the next thing I know, she's like, I'm packed, I'm coming. So she came and stayed with me and my husband for you know, a few weeks while she was getting, she was really quick, she was really well resourced. And she is really doing amazing work nationally. She founded the Transgender Women of Color Collective with the mission to tell the stories of those that can no longer tell their stories. Those that because of being who they are, they're taking their own lives like transgender youth and those that are having her, their lives taken away throughout this country. And she speaks it so beautifully. It's so beautiful in the way that she brings it out that is so realistic and there's no way that someone that is listening to what she has to say cannot agree. How can you not agree when we are being vanished from society? How can we not agree that something needs to change? And it is the work of the Transgender Women of Color Collective that has helped Casa Ruby take presence across this country and around the world. She does global work. She went to the United Nations and she talked about trans women of color dying in this country unattended. And there is no national outrage. And her work is shaping how our work is done. So I want to present this beautiful award to the Transgender Women of Color Collective Global and Lords Hunter for the work that you are doing and supporting our work that goes beyond. I want to say a few words. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is a beautiful award. Um, and it means a lot to me. I'm just a modest girl from Detroit, Michigan. And um, I know I make it look good. But um, you know, it really means a lot to me to stand here and um, with so many beautiful people. Uh, coming from Detroit, I never would think that uh, I would be here in Washington, DC doing such amazing work. Growing up in Detroit with a single family and with my mom, I can remember marching with the union at eight and nine years old for equal rights and equal pay for women and fair working conditions in the Chrysler plants where my mother threw steel every night to provide food for us, me and my three brothers. And it's amazing to be standing here now um, leading an organization, um, being supported by so many wonderful people, the beautiful team, there's no way I could ever do the work I do without the support from my team. So I'm honored to stand here and I'm honored to be in partnership with Casa Ruby. I can remember the first time I came here, like she said, it was the innovation, LGBT Innovation Summit at the White House. And I had never met Ruby, but I had heard about Ruby. And when I came to the meeting, I said, where is Ruby Corrado? She wasn't there, I got on Facebook, I messaged her. And I said, where are you at, girl? She said, I wasn't invited. I said, come here now, you're my guest. And we sat and we talked. And moments later, she says, when are you moving to Washington, DC? And a few months later, I was here. And she has supported me and has loved me. I said, girl, I ain't got no money. She said, don't worry about it. I said, I ain't got no place to stay. She let me slip on her sofa. I said, I ain't got no ID. She took me to get my ID. I said, girl, I ain't got no apartment. I don't know where to stay. She drove me around the town until I found an apartment. And it was so amazing. And I definitely also want to shout out Hayden Mora who was amazing and instrumental and uh, being instrumental financially to get T-Walk here in Washington, D.C. and to make sure that we landed safely and had access to resources. So shout out to Hayden, shout out to the entire team at Casa Ruby, and definitely shout out to the Goddess Queen Sisters of T-Walk. Thank you so much.
isn't this a beautiful award? Yeah. Red, you know. <laughs> Like someone said the other day, it's a shameless plug, my sister, Racine Pendarvis. So this is actually, you know, why we come together, to celebrate. We are one community. We're really one community, and we all do different things. But everybody in this room came today in the rain. In the rain, remember, you know, many people cancel because their hair, you know, gets, you know, right? Because their clothing gets, you know, ruined and damaged. But you are here, you know? And you know why you're here, right? You're here because you care. And that is what we do at Casa Ruby. We care about what we do. There's times we don't have a lot of things, and I'm honest to my clients, no, I cannot get you an apartment in Washington, D.C. when you just got off the bus, the bus from Mississippi, New York, L.A., whatever you're coming from. We cannot get you a green car when you were just released from detention. We can't get it to you right now. But what I always tell our clients, you will not have to struggle alone. We are going to struggle together. And that is how we do our work. You do not have to struggle alone. We are a community that is made of our supporters, that is made of our donors. I want to thank our donors who make possible that I can buy medication for our clients because they don't have insurance yet. I want to thank our donors for making sure that we have the necessary resources. So when a youth comes in homeless and before they can actually get the, the requirements together, that we can put them in a hotel. I remember walking into Washington DC when I was 16 years old, a young feminine boy that had no idea I was very innocent. I was very genuine. I was unbroken. And it was when I decided to fit my body to the heart that I always known I was a very special person. And I felt like a girl at five years old, hating when my dad will take me to the soccer games. I finally made my own choice to change and transition my body. And I transition into poverty. That's what it is. Many of us, the transgender, the gender queer, the gender non-conforming, those who really are different have to transition in poverty, into poverty, deny homes, jobs, IDs, all kinds of things, deny the right to live when we are attacked and killed, but we also transition into happiness. And that is why we are here. Because no matter, tomorrow there will be struggles. Tomorrow there will be more things that we need to do. But we are coming together, the supporters, the donors, the staff, volunteers, everybody, to change the outcome in our own communities. And before we leave, and we're just going to play a video, because we are taking our work to the next level. We are taking our work nationally. The world needs to see. The world needs to see. And there's more visibility that is coming to us. We have Marilyn Soleil, who's my sister. Many, many, we transitioned together. And she is doing a documentary as a transgender woman. The, the second documentary, the first one aired on the Style Network. So please talk to her. She is doing a documentary on the lives of transgender people. 
and she is taking that work more. Uh, I want to remind also that we have a piñata, and for those who don't know, our piñata is where we actually put donations. So before you leave, if you have a little extra, fill the piñata so we can break it later. But I want to say thank you to everyone that is in this room for changing that formula. When we walk out of these doors, feel accomplished, feel fulfilled, that you are doing something to change somebody's life through our work. Anytime that you promote our work, anytime you stand like Shaquita Lee stands in front of thousands of people every month and talks about what it is like to come to this organization, anytime that someone like Elliot goes above and beyond in filing a complaint for discrimination in our city, anytime that someone like Jason Terry goes to the city council preparing a card to tell the Department of Police, the Metropolitan Police Department, that they failed us, the community. Every time that someone like Michael Mancia, who gets, has a full-time job and finds the time to come and volunteer at our youth house, making sure that the work gets done compassionately, that brings the perspective of the clinical setting. Anytime that Dane Edidi goes on stage and talks about the work of trans women of color through her beautiful work, anytime that Catalina stands in public as a transgender undocumented woman and talks about the need to change that formula. Anytime that someone like Lazima, who comes to work every day and cooks for people and makes sure that they are fed. Anytime that you come to this organization, whether it is in your own space and you stand for something, you are making sure that our lives, and I want to welcome, come on in, come on in. Anytime that you do what they just did, show up in the rain and come and support our work. Anytime that you do that, you know what you're doing? You give people like me hope. I cannot do this work. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to be in front of someone that you know their life has crumbled. It is a lot to do this work. And I and we could never do this if you were not part of this work. So I want everybody, when you leave our event today, know that you are as much part of this work as those that actually come to actually do the work. Because it does not happen. You know, we're still humans. We still have to get up the next day. Anytime that we have to go out and talk to the health department, you know what I use a lot? We have over 10,000 followers in our social network that have visited our pages over 40,000 times, like our Facebook page, since we created it probably less a year or two years. We have about 40,000 clicks. You know, that is 40,000 voices. So even those that are not here, are supporting our work. And it is you that is making sure that 10 years from now, our livelihood is different. And how it's gonna be different is by building partnerships with other people. 
And one of the partnerships that I'm most proud of is the partnership that we build with the Transgender Women of Color Collaborative National. And we are going to say night night. And thank you so much. And please be safe as you go home.